Hello again there sports fans, uh, welcome to in another um, Blood Bowl kind of tips for coaching video. Um, this time we're going to have a look at the Dwarf team. So uh, when, when I think about what kind of team I want to play, I like to think in terms of card games, you know, um, do, I want to be, do I want to be playing Blackjack where I just hit, hit, hit until I feel safe? Uh, do I want to play poker? So I'm ignoring the hand I've been dealt and, you know, playing mind games with my opponent. Or do I want to play rummy? You know, where I'm staying flexible, looking out for good combinations to play against, um, you know, the opposition, how to build my team, you know, looking for good combinations in there. Or, you know, like cribbage, um, where I'm looking for mistakes my opponent's making and, you know, exploiting them for my advantage. Or, do I want to play Solitaire, where I'm always playing a different variation of the same game? Now, if I'm looking to play Solitaire, then I go for Dwarfs. They do two things, and they do them very well. First, they let you feel comfortable with the hand you've been dealt, and second, they waste time. They waste a lot of time. Patience is a virtue. And as a dwarf coach, you're going to need a lot of it. By picking a dwarf team, you know, for, for a team you want to play in and blah blah, you're going to open yourself up to accusations of beardiness. Pun intended there, by the way. And, you know, an often preted phrase, one move. All this abuse, it, it, it's kind of deserved as there's really only one way to be successful with it the hairy wee buggers that are dwarfs. Okay, so we'll go have a look at the roster. So, unlike other teams, you've only really got one build if you want to be a good dwarf coach. Um, always take your runners. Um, they're essential to a dwarf team actually picking the ball up. They're about the only players on your team that can handle the ball. Um, don't bother taking an apothecary in your starting lineup because with your armor value nine, you're not going to get very many injuries. You know you're you're very tough nuts to crack. <clears throat> um, any team, I'd advise you want to be taking two or three rerolls to start with. Um, dwarfs really want rerolls because you know because your players are slower, you're going to be rolling more go for it than any other team. Four would be nice for a starting team, but it involves a big trade-off in what players you're fielding. So with a million gold for your team to spend, your team is going to look like this. So you're going to have five longbeards, two blitzers, two runners, two slayers, and three rerolls. That's the optimum build for a dwarf team. Uh, any other players you add in, they're going to be reserves um, to come on and take over from you know linemen that get knocked down or injured or whatever. Or you know, <laughs> if, if they're, they're basically just coming on to replace players. You know, that's this build. That's your team. You don't really need more players after that unless you're looking for for reserves. Um, so let's go have a look at the different positions available to a dwarf player. So first up we have the longbeard, which is essentially the linemen for the dwarfs. Now other positions, uh, sorry, other line positionals, um, they're not that great and they're not usually necessary to your team succeeding. They're, they're fodder basically for your opponent to beat up and smash and chew up and spit out. Uh, dwarf linemen, on the other hand, they are a totally different kettle of fish. Um, they have a high price, they, they'll set you back 70,000 gold, uh, which makes them one of the most expensive linemen in the game, but that high cost, uh, it's worth it. Um, so for developing your dwarf player, you know, with dwarves there's really only one path to go for your team, your position and your plays. That, that's why I say they're, they're like patience. <coughs> Uh, first of all, you take block, 
Um, it's great because it helps keep them on their feet and it saves you a skill up. Oh no, sorry, you don't tape block, sorry. Oh, I'm going mental here. Um, first of all, they start with block. Um, like I said, it's great for keeping them on their, their feet and because they're starting with it, it, it saves you using up um, your first skill up to take block. Uh, second of all, then they also start with tackle which is a great skill for taking out pansy elves when they're trying to dodge out of the way of your vertically challenged players. Um, tackle's great in general for dealing with dodge. Um, if, if you're playing in a league with a lot of dodge, I'd, I'd recommend taking tackle on players. Uh, your third, third point is you have thick skull, um, which is great because it keeps your player on the pitch a bit longer um, by turning the high, the lower roll for a stunned result, which is 8, it turns that into 7. It basically treats an 8 on the injury roll as a, as a 7. So they're only getting stunned rather than knocked out, so you, you don't need to, you know, try and end drive quickly to get them back. However though, with movement 4 and agility 2, they're not going to be moving the ball anywhere. They, um, they're probably not even going to be able to pick it up. But that's okay, because, you know, looking at their stats, um, you can see what they should be doing, which is fighting. And the progression of your dwarf players, um, is, well, your, yeah, your dwarf players are all, all simple progressions, they're all straightforward. And the progression of the longbeards is just as simple. Guard, mighty blow, and stand firm. Take them whatever order you feel is necessary for them. But those are the three skills you want on your your dwarf longbeards. Um, doubles. I'd ignore doubles until you have those three skills. Diving tackle, dodge, sure feet are nice. But at the end of the day, you know your your agility skills and things like that. With agility too, they're they're luxury items. For stat increases, um, take strength anytime it shows up. Um, if, just, if if you roll straight into a strength on your first skill up, take it. Don't even bother worrying about the other skills, you can pick them up later. Um, other skills, uh, they're useful to have, but you don't really need extra armor in a dwarf, don't need extra jelly in a dwarf, and you don't need extra movement in a dwarf, especially a line dwarf. Next, we'll have a look at the Blitzer. Um, you've got a slight, the Blitzer has a slightly higher movement and, you know, agility. So that makes them more natural scorers for a dwarf team, and with your high armor, you can get them stuck in to the opponent if you need them to. Um, you know, blitzers are always the star of the show on any team. Uh, they're they are your your team stars in any team. So the real use of a blitzer, I would say, is to either knock opposing players at the path of your cage, or plug gaps in your defense where it's needed. Um, as with all dwarves, your blitzer's progression path is simple. Guard, mighty blow, tackle. That's it. Um, again, save your doubles until you've got those skills, and or if you get doubles after those, you're looking for diving, tackle, dodge, and sidestep. Stat increases, um, take them all whenever they show up, except armor. Armor 10 is nice to have, but it's really unnecessary on any player. Uh, you know, Armor 9 is tough enough to crack. Armor 10, it's, it's just as tough. There's, it's, it's a wasted stat increase armor. So now we're going to have a look at the only player on a team, on the Dwarf team, that you want to be touching the ball, um, especially when it comes to picking the ball up. Uh, you, can, you can pass to... Maybe not pass to a, a blitzer, but um, if a blitzer manages to get the ball, it, it's a nice bonus. Or any dwarf manages to get the ball, it's a nice bonus, but these are the guys you want to be dealing with the ball. They're your fastest players, and they start with sure hands. That's that's why you want them to be ball carriers. You know, they're, they're higher speed, um, being less prone to dropping the ball. It's, you know, sure hands is a natural skill to have on any ball carrying player you want. Again, dwarf progressions, pretty simple. Their progression path is different from the other players, 
um, because they're ball carriers rather than, you know, more the the more fighting elements of your dwarf team, and also because they don't start with block. So your dwarf player, um, your dwarf runner, sorry, um, you want block, kickoff return, and leader. Unlike the rest of your dwarf players, take doubles whenever they show up. Just take you know if you might you can get a double, take it. Um, for your doubles, you want sidestep, dodge, and guard, because they'll help keep your runner on his feet and moving a bit longer. Stat increases, like with the blitzer, take take them all, even armor, because your your runners have slightly lower armor than the rest of your team, so you want to make them harder to knock down. So now we have the slayers. Uh, they're grumpy, they're irritable. And they're touchy. Those those are the best words you can really use to describe the ginger lunatic that is a dwarf slayer. Dwarf slayers are going to bring two unique skills to your team, Frenzy and Dauntless. Frenzy is a can opener for cages and it's great for surfing opponents off the pitch, but it can lead to your slayer moving out of positions and into a place you don't want him to be. Frenzy is always a risky skill to have on any player um, because you know you can end up moving yourself into prime position for getting yourself surfed off the pitch as well as you know blocking a player you know hitting a player out of the way and he follows up into a place where your opponent's going to have the numbers advantage on them it's it's a double-edged sword frenzy when it works it's great when it doesn't work it's terrible um, you know, it's it's a skill I tend to avoid taking unless they start with it, or if you know it's it's part of what I feel a player's progression should be. Um, good coaches can take advantage of your players having frenzy. They can they can set up traps for them to to go into. Dauntless is a massive boon for dwarfs if they're facing a team with higher strength. You know, if they're facing your strength four teams or your big guys because it lets them bash an opponent's big guy or you know a strength four strength five player with only one support whereas the higher strength players you need you know more guys surrounding it so you know dauntless helps free up um, players for doing other things so for your progression a dwarf slayer you know, you want to maximise your destruction while at the same time keeping them safe from retaliation. You know, if they end up falling into a, a trap from the frenzy where an opponent can, you know, be up on them. So skills you want on your Slayer. You want Strip Ball, Mighty Blow and Stand Firm. Strip Ball, obviously, to get the ball off uh, an opponent's ball carrier. Mighty Blow to increase the heart you put on your opponent stand firm so they, they're you know not so vulnerable to be moved out of position uh, on doubles you want to take sure feet any other double after that whatever don't care it's sure feet is is one you want to take um it keeps you protect uh, sorry i'm stumbling my words here um it keeps your slayer protected from a bad go for it when they're frenzying you know there's nothing worse than going your full movement you know, there's, there's there's nothing worse than having a player with frenzy blitz to like the edge of of their movement, uh, knocking a player just with a push, and then because they've got frenzy, they have to, you know, make another attack, and you know they make their attack. Yeah, they they fail their goal for it before they can make their attack. Nothing worse than that. Um, stat upgrades. Movement and strength, whenever. It makes them faster, it makes them stronger. You know. <sighs> right. I'm only talking about this player that, um, because we need to. The Death Roar, the, the, again, stumbling my words, the Death Roar is by far the most controversial player on a dwarf team. It's killing machine but with it being a secret weapon, you'll only ever get one drive out of it. 
it's very expensive to field, can't handle the ball, and it suffers from loner. Uh, death roars are generally the only big guy I won't take on a team, um, but mostly down to them being secret weapons, you know, losing it. You know, other big guys, yeah, they're they're unreliable because of their, their nega traits and, you know, you know loner. Um, but they, they can hang around for the entire game, whereas a death roller, you know, as soon as you as soon as you score a touchdown, as soon as your opponent scores a touchdown, or you know at the end of a half, it's gone. It's it's off your team. So that's why I'd give it a miss. Um, but if if you do want to take one, I'd leave it out until you're filling the very last slot in your roster. You know you're getting that sixteenth player, um, and if it does manage to scale up, you want multi-block guard for it because it's high strength you know it can, it can dish out punishment on different uh, several players guard helps it support the line um, if you roll a double with it you know for any big guy you want block and um, dodge as well is useful for it too so yeah um, that's the dwarfs they're pretty simple and you know a pretty boring team to play uh, it's, it's because of these reasons uh, I, I tend to avoid running them. Um, dwarf play, you know, I, I said it's the same, you know, at the start of the video, I said it's the same variation of the same game every game. Um, dwarf play is basically the 2 1 grind, where, you know, if you're receiving the ball at the start of the game, you let your opponent score a quick touch, you know, you force your opponent into scoring a quick touchdown, then when you, you know, um, you're on the offensive. Sorry, I keep getting I keep getting kicking and receiving mixed up. Um, you know, if you're playing dwarfs and you're kicking, so your opponent's on the offense, you want to force your opponent to score quickly, so that you can get into your your offensive drive quicker. And when dwarfs are on the offensive, the only play they really have is basically to cage up, you know, have a runner with the ball, have four linemen on, you know, surround them on each corner, then just plod your way up to the end zone with your slayers and your runners and possibly even your spare runner, uh, using them basically to clear a lane for your cage to travel down. That's your dwarf play. That's really the only way you're going to win your games with dwarfs. That's why I say they're, they're boring and I tend not to play dwarfs because of that simplicity. Also, I'm not a fan of the dwarf, dwarf uh, stumbling words again. I'm not a fan of dwarf aesthetics. Um, you know, we short, hairy, you know, the kind of Norse iconography, Scottish accents everywhere. Not a fan of them. You know, I, I live in Scotland. I hear enough Scottish accents. Why do I want to hear them in a video game? <laughs> so, I, yeah. Um, you know, I, I probably avoid dwarfs. For, you know, the whole Scottish thing being thrown in there. For the same reason a lot of people avoid playing human teams or, you know, human characters in fantasy games because they're just like, yeah, I'm a human. I want to play something different. Um, so, yeah, pretty short video. Um, because there's not really a lot to say about dwarves. Um, thanks for watching. If you learned something from this or if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, subscribe, or even pop a donation in my Patreon. Um, the next video I do is going to cover Skaven. Well, I say the next video I do. The next video I do in, you know, the, the beginner's coaching tips kind of series, I'll be covering Skaven, probably. Uh, I've got a couple of scripts written up that, you know, kind of put me off on a tangent. Uh, so, stay tuned for that one. And, you know, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. See you all later. Goodbye. P.S. I love you.